Hello, welcome to the ITL. This week we're actually in the garage. I'm actually going to show you how to, actually I'm reassembling my uh, snow blower. It's due to, well, my auger cable broke on it. The spring on the end of the cable itself, which I am working to get it um, monkeyed around. It's right here. I don't know I'll see how you, well you can see it, but yeah, the end of the spring broke off. I have it off because and I didn't bother showing you how to take it apart because, well, I wanted to make sure I had the right cable, new cable for it because I ordered online. Yeah, this is a, uh, let me remember, uh, I believe it was a two, uh, a 1997-98 model. It was actually, I believe this was actually a 97, but it was, it's, 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 it was actually bought in 98 because the, uh, well, it, it just because it was bought during a severe snowstorm in January. <laughs> and I, how I know this? Well, it, 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 it was my father's snowblower. And it's it just a workhorse. It, it sat for years, though, in his basement because nobody could get it started. And I ended up getting my hands on it and making it so it's easy to start. But, I mean, it didn't take much for that either. But I was it's the old workhorse for me. And I, uh, I was out there just blowing snow away and whenever you come across to where you have something like this happen you see well the, the lever stayed down and it quits blowing snow you kind of have an idea okay what's going on it could be a few things but I mean normally it's going to be the cable and that's my new one right there what you'll see me putting on but this is Yard Machines, MTD, has the, uh, you can see uh, it has four, uh, five speed forward, two speed reverse. And it has the 10 horse to come speed on it. Uh, let's see if we can get it into it. It has the 10 horse to come seat on it. Well, that's a blast from the past. And then we go up here. Here you see it's a 10 horse, 26 inch. Yeah. First thing we got we have to do is remove this cover, which all that is is you got two fasteners, one on each side of it, and I put the fasteners back into place so I wouldn't lose them. And you gotta work it out from underneath this edge here. You can take this off. I decided just to leave it on. And you put that aside. Then, since mine was already broken, the spring is broken, you don't have to worry about unhooking the spring. That's because the spring actually goes right on here on this lever right here. But you have to take loose a pulley which mounts. Uh, get this angle. Mounts right here. Okay? And this is the actual pulley right here. And it mounts right there. I removed it so we can see which cable. Then in the back here, there's one more pulley, and you can see it. Let's see if I can zoom in. Right there, it's kind of I got one bolt out, one bolt just loosened. It's kind of hanging there. You loosen that up, okay? And you got to loosen the uh, fasteners that's actually holding the pulley to the bracket, the wheel to the bracket to get the cable out from underneath because they're kind of pinched. And I'll show you that here in a second on this other pulley. Because Okay, you see right... Okay. See right here, see how the bracket comes up around? And it kind of holds the cable into the pulley. So, again, I'll take this fastener out here. This fastener here is a 7 16 These bolts, actually the bolts, you take off the, the cover and the, the pulleys are all uh, 3 8 on this model. But yeah, I will. First step I'm going to do is to put the spring on because I'm going to work kind of, kind of backwards on this. And I'm going to try to. I want to do this off camera because, well, I got big hands. And that's a small space. But I'm going to try to show you where it hooks on to. 
so you have an idea. Let's see if I can get this in the picture. Okay, okay see that hole right there on the bracket? Your spring's got to hook into that hole. Then it's got to run that way through. So I'll go ahead and get that spring in and I'll, I'll cut back to show you, show you how, what it looks like. Okay, you can see it in the shot right where, right, right there. The spring's actually on, which is not a hard thing. I'll try to give you a little bit of hint. This will bend, kind of wiggle inward. And, I mean, it'll go that way and a little bit this way. Now, I did have to tap the spring kind of whenever I got it over through the, the slot here. Kind of did kind of have to tap it a little bit for it to kind of seat down into the hole. But it's, it, it, this is doable. I mean, this is not a hard job at all. Okay, let's go on the other side and I'll show you the pulley system. The auger clutch cable part I'm using actually is an MTD 9460897. It's an auger clutch cable. MTD 9460897. Okay, whenever I mentioned it, started this video, I mentioned about the, uh, you got to take this fastener loose. Well, what we're going to have to do is feed the cable around the, the wheel, set it down in so it's between the wheel and the bracket here, then snug this fastener down. You don't want this, this fastener tight, tight, but you just want it snug. Okay, everybody, you can see... Uh, I got the the pulley assembly on there. Just make sure your cable stays between, uh, stays freely around the pulley. And you see down there where the light's brighter showing on. There's actually uh, like, a, like a guide stud, and I have the fasteners. Those fasteners are actually three eighths, like I said before. Uh, make sure with well, these MTDs or the old MTDs. Be careful with them because you could strip those out. So make them snug, but not too tight. Tight is tight. I mean, it's just just make them so they're going to hold. You see that uh, there's a bolt on top of there, a uh, fastener on top there. What that is is actually for the cover that goes over it, which we'll be putting on here as soon as I get this job done. Now we'll go around to the back, is to the back pulley. Okay, here we go, guys. Everybody, you see the pulleys right here. Right down here. Sorry about my hand being in the road. We'll go down here. The pulley right there. Show about the shakes. If that helps. Okay. You want just to basically run the pulley over through here. And actually, if all, all you have to do is loosen this one, take this one out, and the whole system will lean to the side. That way, it'll give you room to go between the, the uh, handlebar and the, uh, the fastener for the for the pulley. And that's all you all you have to do to take it apart. You see it's my cables loose here. Which I mean there's I'm I'll tell you I have adjustment. It does work so far. But did all that give you a a little sneak peek a little sneak peek. I've seen a few of these done. And this is actually if you look let's see if we can get a sneak peek down to there. You see where the nuts are right here. Right down here. You can see, oh, let's get a little better view here. Okay, see the nuts here. This is actually an adjuster. Now, like I said, mine's a little long. I think of my, I got something uh, needs lubricate up front because I didn't get them until they lose. But you can unscrew this until they get this the bar out. And that bar goes right into this hole. Now, Little piece of device. While the handle's down, take that bar out, feed it to that hole, bring it down, and screw the cable back on. Then have your, then then do your adjustments. You want this snug. You, you, you want this little snug, but not too tight. And mine's loose, and I know it is. But I'm, uh, I got what it is. It's just, I think I got a worn spring in the bottom. I'll have to change that later. But I, it does seem to engage the clutch. We'll have to try. Well, 
I'll have to try that out. Well, you see, guys, sorry about the noise. I got the heater on, but the things on here. You can see the augers are turning now. I will be buttoning up, put the cover back on. Yes, the, uh, we'll be right back. Oh, now before I go, well, now before I, uh, button this up. Let's take a little bit of a look-see at this thing and do a little bit of a quick discussion. Hopefully, let me get my flashlight out here. Okay. Yes, if you look, my belts are worn. They're what? You see, 97. Next year, they'll be 20 years old. Uh, yeah, they're worn. Why do I replace them now? Well, it's just a cash thing. They're, they're, they're working now. I should be able to get one more season, hopefully, out of them. Then we'll split the auger assembly from the drive assembly and change the belts. Um, the only reason I'll be, I'll, be change, I'll be splitting the change belts because there is a way to change them without splitting. I mean, this is the auger drive belt I'm talking about right now. You can change, from what I understand, you can change those without splitting, but it's awful hard from understand to drive the actual drive belt. And even though it's not in bad shape looking, it's it, it's past due, it's prime. So we'll so back so then we'll, we'll go ahead and change them. But well, I should be able to get one more season out of it. Um, I did have a, a, a couple problems whenever I want to start this thing. And the problems came from when well, I brought it in this play in my garage, and I have the, my heat. My heat on the garage is not um, a constant heat source. All it is is a torpedo heater. I run that only whenever I need to. But whenever I came, brought it in, I was looking at it with the torpedo heater in, and all the snow in the auger assembly melted down to the bottom of the drive of the auger, and it froze an ice cube. So. If it doesn't, I mean, if it seems like it's jammed, heat that up, get, get rid of the ice. Then it'll go, it, it should free up for you. And, and also another problem I had actually came from the pole start. And the pole start, the rope broke. Well, it's almost 20 years old. <laughs> so, how do I fix that? I mean, I did lose a, uh, a fastener. I'll have to go out and buy another nut for the fastener. Um... I don't know how I, I misplaced it, but it, it is misplaced. But there's four of them that will get me through for until I can get to the store and get me a fastener for it. Not a big deal. But what I end up doing is I just end up shortening the rope and tying it in. I mean, I only lost maybe a foot of, I mean, less than a foot of rope. So it, it, it starts. It's all I need to do. You start. Because this thing does have electric start, so if I'm near the house or near the garage, the electric start can be used. And I do use it. But I do, more often than not, not use the uh, pull start. Because the pull start on this thing does work very well. I, uh, even though it doesn't look like I try to maintain this thing, I mean, it's been through a lot. And I don't bother cleaning it most of the time. Because it's a workhorse. I clean it once, twice a year. But I, I do keep it going. I do keep it going. And if it comes to a problem, and this is actually the first part I had to put into it was the cable. So, it's good. I, other than the first part, I absolutely had to. Because the hard start, starting issue, actually came from the spark plug. It had a champion spark plug. It was, uh, the champion spark plug actually read okay, but it just, uh, it, it just wasn't firing. So, I put a, uh, well, I believe it was a U3 or E3. Let me see. E3. Put E3 spark plug in it. And she kicks over and starts. Very easy now. Very easy. Uh, get that back there. Very easy. So I mean, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier on fuel too. But yeah, this is my yard machines. Electric start ten horse. Yeah, this might be a longer ITL, but I figured you know, it might help somebody out, and I figured, well, you know what? Stay before Christmas. If you guys got anything after Christmas that you want, uh, after Christmas you got some time you want to see it, it's here. But I figured this might help somebody out that has one of these older machines. I do, I do, do have to try to do somewhat how-to videos on my own that, as I need it, and this was a needed item. 
and put the case on, the cover back on, all that is is you, you, you just fit it around there, tighten your tooth fasteners down, you're done. But it, it's, it's, it's uh, how Altaro says, there's your dinner. No, there's your supper. And uh, it, it'll, it'll, it'll work for you. And these old machines, they are known to crack down around where the uh, auger assembly and the drive assemblies hook on. They are just cheap stamped metal. If this ever happens to this one, I'm going just to take it, I'm take it apart, take it in, get it welded up, get it braced up, put it back on in service. It's why I, I actually priced similar machines to this new in uh, now, and I mean I'm, you're talking over nine hundred dollars, and this this cable only cost me like thirteen, and I mean simple basic maintenance, change your oil. Drain the fuel down whenever you put it to sleep for the summertime. Make sure your air is up. I mean, it's simple maintenance. You're, it lasts you for a long, long, long time, many years. But this is Muzzle Bike. Hoping you all have a great week. And if I don't see you over the, uh, the holiday season, I hope you have a good holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. This is Muzzle Bike, signing out.